here's what I would love for you guys today. I would love for you to be able to identify the multiplicity of roots. That'll be so much fun for you. Oh, and how I would love for you to be able to use the rational root theorem and the irrational root theorem to solve polynomial equations. Buckle up, because you're about to have some fun. Okay, here we go. We're going to use factoring to solve some polynomial equations. Solve each polynomial equation by factoring. What should we always look for first? <laughs> yeah, a greatest common factor. So, 3, 18, and 27, 3 goes into all of those. So we can factor out a 3. We have x to the 5th, x to the 4th, and x to the 3rd. So that means that they all have at least x to the 3rd. That's our greatest common factor. So 3x to the 3rd. How am I going to get 3x to the 5th? 3x to the 3rd times x squared. Now i got to get to 18x to the 4th. So 3 times 6 is 18 x to the third, I need one more x. And then the last one, 3x to the third, to get to 27x to the third, we would just have to multiply by 9. Cool. Now look at what's left inside the parentheses. x squared plus 6x plus 9. What factors of 9 add up to 6? 3 and 3, right? So we would say x plus 3 times x plus 3. To kind of bring down the rest of this stuff here. We'd have this. Now, we can even clean that up a little bit more. x plus 3 times x plus 3 would be written as x plus 3 squared. We have the 3x to the third on the outside. And then we're ready for our, our answers. So this 3x to the third out here, that one, x could equal 0. And then this x plus 3 to the second power, x could equal negative 3. So we solved them both by factoring. Now this multiplicity that we'll eventually talk about, uh, we'll say like, oh, well, how many times could it equal 0? So x to the third means x times x times x. So that means you could have x equals 0 three times out there. So it would have a multiplicity of 3. This x plus 3, see how it's x plus 3 squared? That means there would be two of those. So x equals negative 3 will have a multiplicity of 2. But we'll get there. Don't worry. Just throwing you a little preview there. Let's try this one out. x to the fourth minus 13x squared equals negative 36. It's got to equal 0 when we're solving this. So we have to add the 36 to both sides. So we will have x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36 equals 0. Now, ordinarily it is x squared and x. That's how we're used to factoring it. So this x to the fourth and x squared will just mean that when we're factoring it, so it would normally be like x minus 9 and x minus 4, but this would be x squared minus 9, and x squared minus 4, right? Because x squared times x squared gives you that x to the fourth power. But look at that. Difference of squares, difference of squares. So x squared minus 9 would factor into x plus 3 times x minus 3. x squared minus 4 would factor into x plus 2 times x minus 2. So this will give us our four zeros here. x plus 3, x equals negative 3. x minus 3, x equals positive 3. x plus 2, well, x equals negative 2. And x minus 2, x equals positive 2. Look at that. Four different zeros. <laughs> Good times. I'm going to solve these ones on the next video, but go ahead and try these out. Factor, solve them. You've got this. You can do it. Oh, I believe in you. <laughs>